everybody. How's it going? Yeah, first day of Gen Con. Woo! Okay, let's do this. So thank you all so much for coming. This is Queering the Table, uh, the impact of gender in board gaming. Um, and I want to first give a huge thank you to our premier sponsor, Leader Games. If it wasn't for Leader Games, I would not be able to do this presentation. So thank you to them. Um, yes. <laughs> And then we will also have some giveaways from Arcane Wonders, so there's some games here, and then uh, Board and Dice as well, although those will be sent to you, shipped to you, uh, directly to your homes. Uh, so that'll be cool. Uh, but let's get on into things. My name is Matthew McCack. Uh, my pronouns are he, they. I am a licensed mental health counselor. And um, uh, so yeah, I'm a licensed mental health counselor. I'm a therapist in New York. Uh, I'm based there. I'm also a content creator, so I make YouTube videos and Twitch uh, live streams all on This Is Room 51. That's where I'm from. That's uh, something that I am co-founder of along with my brother, uh, Justin. I am also part of The Quad, which is on uh -huh. <laughs> Board Game Geek. <laughs> um, we have a, a member from The Quad here as well, Stephen Bonacore. Um, and I am also part of Tabletop Live Network, which is um, just a network of people who uh, live stream on, uh, on Twitch uh, for board gaming. Uh, and then lastly, I'm part of the Adequate Four, so I'm all over the place uh, doing things. Um, I am a non-binary trans masculine person. Again, my pronouns are he, they. Uh, I used to run LGBTQ plus safe space trainings for colleges usually. Um, I did that for staff and for students uh, and student leaders as well. This is my second time at Gen Con, and this is my second time presenting at Gen Con, uh, although my first time presenting totally by myself at Gen Con. So I am excited to do this, uh, and I'm excited for all of you to be here. So I just want to start off with some group norms first. So questions, please ask questions. It's OK. No question is dumb. No question is irrelevant. Um, if you feel like this is something that you should know but you don't know, um, it is OK to ask questions in here. I want us to feel safe enough to do that um, in, in this space because it can be scary sometimes to ask questions. Um, so please ask them. Number two is the Vegas rule. So everything that is said in here stays in here with a caveat. I am recording this for YouTube. <laughs> but everything that you say, especially questions and answers at the end of, the, um, at the end of this session, um, we're going to stop the recording. Everything will be cut out. Uh, so it's only whatever I'm saying is going to be posted to the internet, <laughs> essentially. Uh, so the Vegas rule does not apply to me. <laughs> um, and lastly, reserve the right to change your mind. It is OK to change your mind. Uh, you might hear something and think, like, you know what? That actually sounds better. That sounds like a better solution maybe, or maybe it's like, that's a new idea that I hadn't thought of, and maybe that, that changes my perspective. That is cool, that is okay, that is part of being human. Uh, so that's awesome. So those are just some group norms. Getting on into things, I wanna start off with the demographics of board gamers. I took this from a study by uh, Meeple Mountain in 2019. They had 814 participants. Sorry, by the way, if you can't see this uh, quite clearly, I didn't get the projector thing. Uh, we got this last minute, um, but hopefully it's clear enough. 69% um, of folks, uh, of participants identified as male, 27% identified as female, and only 0.04% identified as non-binary or other. So as we can see, there was a staggering difference between the genders um, in, in board gaming, or at the very least, those who were willing to participate in this kind of study. Um, and we would like to bridge the gap there. Uh, and that is why this is so important. Um, so this same study showed that socializing was the number one reason to play games. You can socialize with anyone, all kinds of genders, all kinds of races, religions, everything, um, all kinds of people. And so if we are limiting ourselves to just a very specific type of person, how are we really uh, gaining some social skills and being able to broaden our horizons in uh, socializing with other people? Uh, innately, as humans, we are social creatures, right? We want to build communities. We want to feel a sense of belonging, uh, which is another reason why this is so important. We want to build that sense of belonging for people at conventions, at board game cafes, at you know just your home table uh, when you're playing games. 
There is, uh, I'm curious, how many of us uh, here are either educators or librarians of any sort? Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, how many of us are like retailers or content creators? Yeah, yeah. You raise your hand. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, OK, so that's cool. There needs to be a safety there, right? When we are teaching people things, uh, whether it's a board game, whether it's math, um, whether it's whatever. Um, so safety in learning and board gaming uh, gives us such a great tool and way to teach uh, different life skills, whether it be social skills, whether it be mathematical skills, science skills, whatever it might be. Um, uh, board gaming allows us to do that but we need to be safe in order or at least feel safe in order to feel like we can learn right because if we're if we're feeling like kind of freaked out we're not learning anything uh we're just you know frozen up um there needs to be a safety in social spaces so when we are playing games like i said this is a social experience uh a lot of times unless you're solo gaming but even that you're you're having a social time with yourself right do you feel safe within yourself do you feel safe with other people in the room um and if you can if you do feel safe you're able to create those connections that community um that uh that sense of belonging that we were talking about Ultimately, also, uh, it's important to have new perspectives in gaming, right? Because how many of us are a little bit tired of seeing sort of the same mechanisms and the same themes over and over again in board gaming? I'm seeing a lot of nodding heads, right? Uh, if we can have more people designing these games, and that's another thing, so new, new designers, uh, we can have different mechanisms come into play. We could have different themes come into play, things that we haven't thought of, haven't heard of, um, haven't imagined. So um, that is something that I think is so important uh, within, for, for the hobby itself. Um, and thank you, by the way, for, for closing the door. I forgot to do that. Um, but yes, yeah, so that, that is something super important. Um, and I think that the hobby itself can grow. It could expand its player base as well as its gaming uh, space. Um, and, and being able to have those types of experiences that really have play elevate the mind. So how do we actually queer the table uh, with all of this? So there has to be an intentionality with playing games by queer designers. And a little bit later, I'm going to state some uh, queer, outly, outwardly queer designers uh, that are out there um, who are making fantastic games. Uh, there's gonna be a whole lot more, but I, I only feel about six on, on the presentation. But having an intentionality, if you look on uh, Board Game Geek, you could search up the game uh, and it tells you who the designers are. And then you could search up those designers and see what they're, uh, who they are, what they're like, um, and all these things. If they're out about being LGBTQ+, they usually state that somewhere, either on Board Game Geek itself or somewhere along the interwebs, uh, which is very, very cool. Uh, playing games with LGBTQ plus themes. There are few and far between um, games that actually have these themes, unfortunately. However, I've been noticing a shift where there are some games now, and one that comes to mind is Conquest Princess Fashion is Power. Uh, yeah, that was done by Fight in a Box, uh, Seppi Yoon. And I am so excited for this game that uh, it, it just, it, it's not something that shows like, um, and by the way, the, these games are totally fine where it's like out and proud and like, yes, this is totally LGBTQ and you know, all that stuff. But this one is more so like, it's just kind of baked into the theme, right? It, it's a world that just exists with these uh, concepts without it being um, uh, demonized in any sort of way by, by outside influences uh, as we see in real life, unfortunately. Um, allow for players to explore their gender identities in games and this includes cis folks as well we all want to explore our identities right we want to explore our femininity our masculinity even when society tells us that that is not okay but innately we want to because why stay in just one small or two small boxes? Uh, we can uh, explore that through gaming by so many times there are games that have um, unfortunately only male characters or there might be like one female token character in there, uh, possibly two if you're lucky. Uh, but there has been a, a little bit of a shift there where a lot of times like with a player board, if you flip it over, it's got uh, two different genders, man or woman. It'd be nice if there was more non-binary folks folks in, uh, in gaming. I see Ned's uh, heads nodding. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> oh, that would be cool. 
Um, so there, there has been a little bit of a shift in that as well, where you'll notice people will kind of sneak it into there um, in some of the board gaming. But it'd be nice if we didn't have to just sneak it in. It'd be nice if it was like there, present, on the cover even. That would be really, really cool. Um, and I think that exploring our identity through gaming is so important because that's how we can learn a lot about ourselves. That's what makes uh, playing so much fun. That's what uh, helps elevate our minds, our perspectives, uh, expand um, on ourselves and enrich our, our own beings. Um, and, and I want to uh, say that Queering the table also asks us to move away from heteronormative and cisnormative ideas. So a heteronormative idea is being, you know, that uh, certain games, a, a lot of games unfortunately have it where the uh, heterosexual couple is the, is the main, right? That is part of the base game. Um, and then uh, very rarely will you see like same sex couples in gaming, unfortunately. Um, there's been a little bit of a shift in there, but it, it needs to, we need to do a little bit better. Um, or actually a lot better <laughs> when, when it comes to that. Uh, cisnormative ideas, I don't know a whole lot of games that really do have like trans folks in there or non-binary folks in there. A lot of times it's assumed at the very least that these characters that you're playing as or characters that are on the box cover um, are cisgender. And it would be cool if it was somehow baked into there where it's like, no, actually they're not. And there are some games that do that and I'll get into that in a hot minute. Um, the other thing is, so ask questions and be curious without being creepy. So uh, <laughs> it's okay to ask questions of your fellow players, especially if you're playing with other LGBTQ plus folks. And this goes for, you know, if you are LGBTQ plus yourself as well, right? Playing with other uh, people who are, who are like you, being part of that community, uh, that creates that sense of belonging. But asking questions, if, they, if you're going to ask something that's a little bit more invasive, one, make sure that you are really close with this person and you know it is okay to do that. If it is a more invasive question and you're not exactly close to this person, you probably want to avoid asking that particular question, but you can have uh, Google at your fingertips with your phones. Uh, so you can research that stuff, look into it, and if you have specific questions about certain things, then it might be cool to, to ask your friends and everything. Um, being curious, that's part of being curious, right? Doing the research uh, and part of actually like uh, looking for other players to play with, not always the same people that you play with um, or the same types of people that you play with. Expand your horizons. You might, you might uh, be surprised by what you find. And then, uh, like I said, playing with LGBTQ plus folks, that's, that is one of the best things. Like I said, even if you are LGBTQ plus, play with other people uh, in your community. It is fun, it is cool, and it creates a sense of belonging. If you are not LGBTQ+, it creates a sense of understanding. Um, and I think that is so important. And then it also creates this space for you to feel safe. Because uh, sometimes we might fear like, what if I say the wrong thing? What if I ask the wrong questions? The more you play with these people, the more you see that these, we're all just human. Uh, we're all just human beings and it's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to apologize for those mistakes and, and move on and learn. Uh, and I think that'd be really, really cool. So those are some ways to queer the table. There are so many other ways, but um, we don't have time for that. Um, so this is something that I've been thinking a lot about uh, lately. And I kind of wrote this letter to no one in particular, um, just as a, as a thing. So we are not just expansions. Dear designers and publishers, LGBTQ plus people should not be thought of as an expansion. We should not be an afterthought nor a hindrance to your rules. We are here, we exist, and we should be part of the base game. Thank you, a fellow player. So that is, uh, I've no, thank you. Uh, I have noticed that a lot of times, especially like on Kickstarters, we might be part of like, uh, what's it called, a stretch goal. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, or you have to get the expansion in order to play as yourself in a game. Uh, we should be part of the base game. We are, we are here, right? And it would be very cool. And I know that sometimes uh, rules, they have it where it's like, it doesn't make um, a whole lot of, not, not that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it actually does hinder the rules uh, in, in certain ways. I'm thinking of end of the line. That's actually a, a video I just did. Um, 
by actually a gay designer, and he knew this. He knew that this was an issue, uh, but he is trying to solve it um, as we speak. So, but it is something to think about, like how can you make it part of your base rules uh, when, you are, when you are doing this? Uh, we, we should not be a second thought. So I want to go into some LGBTQ plus uh, board game designers. Uh, these are some really, really great folks, most of which I have um, personal um, attachment to uh, and, and connection with. So uh, in the top left corner here is Isaac Vega. Um, and he is a phenomenal person. He is so kind, so nice. Uh, he co-runs Ro uh, Rose the Rose Gauntlet Foundation, if you've heard of that. Um, and he is probably best known for his game Dead of Winter. Um, and he does, he is somebody who kind of like sneaks in uh, queer uh, themes into his game. So if you look for it, it is there in all of his games. Uh, next up in the top middle here is Bez uh, Shariari. And she is such a quirky person. She is fun. Uh, she makes very quirky games. Everything she makes is by her. She draws her own uh, stuff for the games. And they are just, the best way I, I think that I could describe her games is it's as if somebody uh, designed it who was a child, but with an adult's mind, okay? Uh, so when you play these games, you feel like a kid again, while also feeling like this is kind of sophisticated in a way. Um, but you're also just having fun and she really channels that. Uh, and I, I think that is what brings the sophistication in. Uh, so it's very, very cool. Next up, we have Amabel Holland down here, uh, bottom left. And she is so cool because she creates games that have social commentary to them. Um, a lot of times LGBTQ plus focused, uh, but not always. And she makes games um, like for you. So she doesn't mass market or, or mass produce games at all. If you want a game, you go to her website, you say that I want this game that you make, and then she will make it for you. And then it'll be sent to you. I don't know a whole lot of people who do that, uh, but she does that. I don't know how she finds the time to do that, but um, she does it and they are just really great games. So not only do they have social commentary, they're also just really fun games um, that make you think. Next up is Nikki Valen. So that's the top right over there. Uh, that's their avatar. And they are probably best known for Mansions of Madness second edition. Uh, they've also done Arkham Horror third edition. So they're, they're big into Cthulhu. Um, and uh, they, they are cool. They, uh, one of my favorite games from them is Legacy of Dragonholt. That is a game that is like a role playing style game, um, but, but it's still tabletop. You don't need a dungeon master or a game master or anything like that. Uh, you play uh, either by yourself or with a group of people cooperatively. And there are LGBTQ plus characters in the game and in the world, and it's nothing like, it, it's not trying to say that, um, there's nothing about it where like society is, is deeming it negative or anything like that. It's like, nope, this is just part of the world. Everybody accepts it. And I kind of love when games do that and let you enter that type of world, um, especially like, as an escape from, from our reality sometimes. It's, it's really nice to see that. Next up is Seppi Yoon right here in the middle. So this is the person who I was just talking about with Conquest Princess, Fashion is Power. Uh, he runs a publishing company called Fight in a Box uh, Games. And talk about another quirky person. He is wacky, crazy. His games are um, crazy and just super fun. Uh, I think he is one of uh, the most generous people I have met. Um, and he, yeah. If, if you want fun in games, he's got it. Uh, his games don't always have to do with LGBTQ plus themes. They're just whatever. They could be about squirrels or whatever. Um, so uh, yeah, if you like some like quirky, wacky games, he would be totally up your alley. Last up, we have Taylor Shuss uh, in the bottom right-hand corner over there. And he created the game called Stonewall Uprising. Um, who here is um, uh, familiar with Stonewall? Yeah, okay, cool, 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 cool. So, so a lot of the folks, but uh, for those who don't know, Stonewall was, uh, it was essentially, this is gonna be a super brief overview, but there was a riot um, and <laughs> it, uh, it has allowed, it, it was like the, the precipice 
for creating some of the rights that we have today for LGBTQ plus folks, such as same-sex marriage, uh, transgender healthcare, and all that, although policies are being taken away, unfortunately. Um, but Stonewall was like a big starting point for, for all of that. Uh, and so he created this game about, about that event, and uh, it, it's a two-player game where one person is playing as the as the LGBTQ plus folks, and then the other player is playing as the man, and you want to take that man down. <laughs> um, so uh, you can also play it cooperatively or solo in case like either it, you might not want to play as the man. So um, there. So he's cool. Uh, check out some of his games. So I want to go into some LGBTQ plus board game content creators that are out there um, because these are the people that we're watching to see, you know, who's got games and all that stuff. But this is also representation, right? Um, so we have Hatch This Way, which is a podcast. He does, um, he highlights other board game content creators who are queer as well. Um, he is a phenomenal person, super kind, um, makes great conversation. I think actually I was on the podcast at one point. I was, yeah, I guessed it on it. <laughs> um, yeah, so he, he is super awesome. Uh, next up is uh, Thinker Themer. Um, so that's uh, headed by uh, Amy and Maggie. They are a same-sex couple and they are loud and proud about it. They do board game reviews um, and uh, a lot of times they do uh, reviews on Kickstarters that are coming out. So they, they are also just so, so, so nice. Um, and they're, they're very, very sweet. Next up is Get Gaming. Uh, so that one is more like 18 plus rated, I would say. Uh, they are so funny. Um, and they, they, by the way, they run a podcast and YouTube uh, channel, um, Get Gaming. And I actually had them on my Twitch channel. And they are just, they're just so funny. Like I, every word that comes out of their mouth is just something that is hilarious. And I find them to be so much fun to watch and to, con to converse with. And they are another one who they talk a lot about social issues uh, pertaining to LGBTQ plus folks uh, in board gaming. Next up is Jamie Daggers. This is her uh, logo there. Um, and she is best known for her live uh, Twitch play, uh, not playthroughs, uh, she is known for miniature painting. And she gives you tips and tricks on how to paint minis. Um, and she is a phenomenal mini painter. Um, and she has a Patreon. If you ever want like one-on-one -on -one, uh, sessions with her, she will do that, which is really, really cool. Uh, she's pro she probably has events here at Gen Con to teach mini paintings. Uh, I know I went to one last year. Uh, another very kind person, super gentle. Uh, she's awesome. Um, and then as I said, Fight in a Box. Obviously, I'm a big fan of Fight in a Box. <laughs> um, and so, uh, like I said, that was by, that's run by Seppi Yoon. And he also does, so aside from uh, board game content, uh, he makes content creation. He does board game design tip for a day. Those are YouTube shorts that he makes, and they are really great advice. Um, as somebody who is actually trying to make a board game right now, uh, I have found it very helpful, uh, his stuff. So, uh, and he's also someone who is super generous, super giving. Um, so these are just some folks that you could check out. Uh, I was curious if any of you have heard of any other people um, that you could check out for, for content creation. Yeah. Cardboard, is, is podcast? Podcast, yeah. Cardboard time? Cardboard time is a good one. Yes, cardboard time is very, very cool. Um, and yeah, 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 yeah. Would you like to talk a little bit about them? Oh, I think she just gives really good uh, reviews of board games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. So yeah, cardboard time. So that's another one to check out. Like I said, th this is only like, what did I put? Like five people, but there are others out there and hopefully they gain more and more uh, popularity as time goes on. And then I'll do just a little shameless plug of myself. <laughs> um, so this is my YouTube channel called Room 51 and I do board game reviews and playthroughs on Twitch like I had mentioned before. Um, and I talk a lot, I also do queer reviews. So any like board games that I find that have some sort of like queer elements in it, I will highlight that. If there are board games that could have had it but do not, I say, hey, this could have had that and it doesn't. Um, but yeah, and a, a lot of my stuff, I talk about social issues pertaining to LGBTQ plus folks. 
um, on, uh, in, within the board gaming hobby. I am trying to reach 1,000 subscribers, so any help <laughs> is welcome. <laughs> Okay, and so these are some terms that you might have heard, and this is where I, I think like a lot of questions can come in. And yeah, so these are some terms that you might have heard, uh, and if you have heard of them, uh, but you don't know anything about them, you can you know raise your hand and ask about it. If you know a little bit about it, but you want to know more about it, go ahead and ask. Or you've never heard this word before in your life, um, and you want to know more about that, uh, please go ahead, uh, raise your hand. If you're not comfortable to ask uh, here right now, feel free to ask me after. And then this is some inclusive language. I think that language is so important when we are trying to queer the table here, right? Um, so we want to avoid saying things like born female or born male, rather saying assigned female or male at birth, um, because that more accurately describes what happens uh, in the doctor's office. And it also, when you say something like born female or born uh, male, it diminishes and invalidates those who are trans. Um, and, and yeah, it's just not, it's not as fun. <laughs> um, so we also want to avoid saying both genders or opposite sexes uh, because there are more than just two genders, right? So we want to say all genders. Um, opposite sexes, so we might have noticed this in the board gaming community that there is a, uh, a little bit of competition. It, it's, it's worse than competition, but uh, between men and women. Um, in the board gaming sphere, right? Just like I was showing with the demographics as well. So if we can eliminate some of that thinking of like opposite sexes, right? Like it, it kind of goes, you know, uh, it, it has that like competitive tone to it. Uh, we want to maybe get rid of that and just saying like all genders. Um, and it's a more welcoming and more inclusive uh, way of saying things. Something else we want to avoid saying is ladies and gentlemen. I know that that sounds like super proper and super polite and everything, but it's actually not very inclusive. So instead, we might want to say things like everyone, folks, honored guests. I don't know about you, but I would love being called an honored guest. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and then lastly, avoiding saying, and there's a bunch of things that we could avoid uh, saying and changing our, our wording here, but uh, these are just a few. Uh, so avoiding saying this is, this is more uh, pertaining to career. So mailman, fireman, policeman, because uh, people of all genders do these jobs, not just men. So we have mail clerk, firefighter, police officer. And then in rule books, a lot of times we see he, him pronouns. Although there's been a shift, right? We, we are seeing some she, her at the very least. Um, uh, or there's interchanging, right? So th sometimes they'll use he, sometimes they'll use she. You can use they, them pronouns. Um, that is inclusive of everyone involved. Uh, and you can say the word player or players. Um, it is not confusing. I know a lot of folks will say like, well, it becomes confusing when you're reading the rule books. And it's like, no, if it's written properly, it's not confusing. Um, proper grammar is good. <laughs> So once again, I want to give a huge thank you to our sponsors. So Leader Games being our premier sponsor um, of this event, again, without them, would not have been able to do this. Uh, and just for Leader Games, Arcane Wonders, and Board and Dice, I think they are part of queering the table, right? Just by them uh, donating to this cause is them saying that, yeah, this is important. We want this to happen. You all being here is part of clearing the table, uh, you know, making this an important uh, investment of your time. I know that there are so many things happening at Gen Con that you could be doing, and you decided to be here. So thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate it.